We have some major news to discuss uh, because less than an hour ago, Illinois announced that All-American candidate Terrence Shannon Jr. has been charged with rape in the state of Kansas stemming from an incident in September. He has been, per university policy, suspended from all team activities. Right now, that's all we know. So it would be reckless for us to speculate on what this will mean for Terrence Shannon other than the obvious. Uh, but what we can agree on, I, I think, Norlander, is that it's a development that really deflates what had been a great start to the season for the Illini because it's a development that will at least temporarily remove Illinois' best player from a team that's 9-2 and two with a win over FAU. Yeah, I, uh, this certainly hit like a, a bolt from the blue, um, uh, at least on my end. I, I, I had no idea this was uh, waiting. Illinois did. I'm going to read the, the full statement real quick here. We're going to just – we're going to give you the hard news and a, and a quick thought on this. But you know what? Like there's – there are there's so much still f to be developed with this story, uh, and this is broken as GP said, as coincidence would have it. Um, really, less than an hour that we were already planning to uh, to get this podcast up and rolling here. So here is Illinois' statement that came out on Thursday afternoon. On Wednesday, the Douglas County District Attorney, my words here, that's out of Kansas as a reminder, issued a warrant for the arrest of Terrence Shannon Jr. Per policy, the Division of Intercollegiate Athletics. DIA has suspended Shannon from all team activities effective immediately. Shannon is charged with rape as defined under applicable Kansas law. The alleged incident in Kerbal Shannon was visiting Lawrence, Kansas to attend the Illinois at Kansas football game played on the evening of Friday, September 8th as a spectator. He was not in Lawrence on official university business, nor was he a member of the university's travel party. Shannon traveled to Lawrence today where he presented himself to authorities. He posted bail and is returning to Champaign. The university and DIA take allegations of sexual misconduct seriously while respecting due process and the presumption of innocence afforded through the legal system. Director of Athletics Josh Whitman, quote, said the university and DIA have shown time and again that we have zero tolerance for sexual misconduct. At the same time, DIA policy affords student athletes appropriate levels of due process based on the nature and severity of the allegations. We will rely on that policy and our prior experiences to manage this situation appropriately for the university and the involved parties. And quote, the statement finishes with DIA and Urbana campus officials have been aware of a Lawrence police investigation into Shannon since late September, but until Wednesday had yet to receive actionable information shannon's arrest triggers the dia student athlete misconduct policy under that policy shannon has been immediately suspended from all team activities any change to shannon's status will be communicated in a timely manner that is the end of illinois statement the one thing that obviously jumps out is the fact that illinois was aware that the police were looking into an incident uh, that has now been an alleged rape uh, against terrence shannon jr but was obviously quiet on that chose not to act on it uh, the specific language here parish uh was that it had yet to receive actionable information until wednesday he traveled to kansas on thursday turned himself in was out on bail he's heading back terrence shannon jr suspended indefinitely obviously a terrible headline we wait for more information to be uncovered, but uh, that is uh, quite clearly a doozy and one totally out of left field. Some will want to ask why the university chose to play Shannon, knowing that there was some investigation going on. The university explained itself there. That will probably appease some people and not appease others. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with the way Illinois has handled this. Um, you know, I think when somebody is charged with a serious crime like this, then I do like that a university has a policy in place to automatically trigger a suspension so that you're not influenced by this guy is a projected first team all American. And by the way, just for Illinois fans uh, or for people who aren't Illinois fans or maybe not big 10 fans who don't know who we're talking about here, this guy would be a first team all American today. If we were voting first team all Americans today, he is number three right now in the Ken Palm Player of the Year race behind only Zach Eady and Cal Filipowski. So he's the highest rated non-big in the country. Again, would likely be a first team All-American right now, or at least yesterday. He's averaging 21.7 points, 4.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 33 minutes per game, shooting above 51% from the field, above 40% from three. Um, he had emerged also as a first round option. 
for the 2024 NBA draft. Now everything is up in the air. So I guess there's a lot of different places to go. We'll just address the social media chatter. How could Illinois be playing this guy when they knew he was being uh, investigated for sexual assault? Well, that's a presumption. We don't know exactly what they knew and didn't know. But people do get falsely accused of sexual assault. Um, I realize it's not common, but it does happen. And you can accuse somebody of something with literally no evidence other than your mouth. And I would be uncomfortable with university policies just automatically triggering suspensions every time somebody says something about somebody else. Um, so I don't mind that that Illinois let the process play out. But when you get to this point, he has been charged with rape, then Illinois is doing what any self-respecting university would do, which is um, remove him as a representative of a high-profile university athletic team. Um, we, we'll see where this goes from here, but I, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, you included, but I, I, I don't have a problem with the way Illinois handled this to this moment. I, I, I need more information. So with what we have here, um, this is absolutely the proper course of action right here in the moment, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, what Illinois did or did not know in terms of the actual details, well, that's uh, frankly, uh, only a few people have that information. We'll see if that gets uncovered in the days, weeks, or months to come. Uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. being uh, accused of this, obviously, um, you know, it's it's about as serious as it gets, quite clearly. And We'll save further comment. Parrish, I mean, this is uh, this is a major story, but it just landed. Illinois statement laid it out, I guess, as clear as the school was willing to or able to right now. Again, it's saying it did not have actionable information until Wednesday. It was aware of, a, of an investigation. How much further they went into that remains to be seen. This also happened outside, outside of the state. Just a couple of factors here that make this... Um, make this different from sometimes when we see these uh, cases uh, and unfortunately we see them uh, still way too frequently uh, but he's on the bench and yeah it, you know it, it becomes all the more newsworthy not just because anything like this is obviously um, uh, worthy of a headline and more but he just happens to be one of the and you know five to ten best players in the sport this season and uh, this wasn't you know and hearing from a few people since the news broke Paris, I just you know I didn't have any idea this that this was that this was going on, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's quite the downer of a uh, of a plot development to wrap up the year twenty twenty three in college years. It really is, and uh, just one last thing. Um, again, we know we'll know more. I hope this time next week than we know right now. Eventually, the evidence will presumably be presented. But um, I, I will ask you this, independent of the Terrence Shannon story. Just take that, set it aside. Let me just ask you a question. Forget this ever happened. When is the last time you can remember a Division I power conference men's basketball player returning to his team after being charged with rape? I can't. I mean, I haven't. I haven't scanned back. I don't know how how often. I mean, I can't think that. of one. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it, maybe it's happened. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I'm sure it has happened at some point. But like, I don't remember one. I don't remember you and I doing a podcast ever mm -hmm. talking about this guy was charged for rape, charged with rape in December, and he's back playing in the NCAA tournament. This is wild. I don't remember ever talking about that. So again, who knows where this goes with Terrence Shannon, but. People who are charged with the crime that he has been charged with do not typically return to college basketball. Is that a fair statement? I think that, yes. With the way you laid it out, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just uh, like obviously a, cr a, a, a crime was allegedly committed here. That's the most important thing. What allegedly happened to uh, presumably a young woman is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But – this is a basketball podcast and it obviously um, has big basketball ramifications for Illinois, for the big 10, for the sport in general. Let me ask you this and then we'll move on. Okay. How would you handle it? If you're me Friday mornings, top 25 and one, I would honestly just keep it as is and wait for the games to play out. Honestly. I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting situation from purely from the standpoint of you have to rank these teams every morning. Right. Uh, just let Illinois play the games and then just take it from there. I think that is what I've done in the past. So if I continue to do it, it'll be consistent with what I've done in the past. I don't even I, like, let me be clear. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. They're clearly not the same basketball team yeah. tomorrow as they were two days ago. Right. But in the past, I have just said, I'm going to respect the resume. 
and I'll adjust when the results start differing from the previous results. And I imagine that's what I'll uh, that's what I'll do Friday morning. I've got a little bit of time to thinking about it. 